you lousy Florida gardener here. I'm gonna talk to you today about insecticides and some fungicides. Here in town, even before I got into growing flowers and plants, I ran a feeding garden center for just short of 20 years. One of the most common questions I had in there to do with lawns and gardens, whether it be vegetable or flowers, was how to control weeds, how to control insects and funguses. Weeds, we're gonna do in a different category because that involves some herbicides and the herbicides, there's so much to it that it really needs its own video. So what we're gonna talk about today is basic insecticides and herbicides and application techniques. When you go to talking chemicals, people kind of panic because of what's been put on by the natural people. Uh, nothing wrong with natural, but what the, you don't understand a lot of times is that these natural people are practicing natural on a, wa a wide land base, which is no problem. Tends to be retired people, people with small garden areas, or a lot of housewives who don't work, who are at home, who have plenty of time. It's just not realistic if you got a, a plant in the middle of a large yard that you don't practice that on a large scale that's got bugs to do that. I tell you that because in that feed store, I'd have people come in, they'd ask you what they were trying to treat for, you'd show them a product and they'd be buying that product and tell you how. Well, that's not what they normally use. They use a natural product for that, that they use that works, but they're buying your product. So in saying that, not to put the natural people down, in the real world, the working person, you don't have that kind of time. Insecticides are relatively safe if used properly and follow directions. Same way with effectiveness. Most people who use a product who figure out that it don't work, 90% of the time is because you didn't read the direction. You should be looking for several things. Number one, is it safe to use on the type of plants that you're doing? In other words, is it vegetables or is it food crops? Is there a wait time? You need to know that. Secondly, you need to know relatively what type of applicator do they recommend on most directions it'll tell you a pump sprayer a tank sprayer or maybe you're using a dusting product with a dust applicator you need to know what do they recommend what device works best for that for putting that out otherwise you're not getting the effect when you're saying the product doesn't work the product will probably work you just didn't put it out right ratio and mixture you need to know that you need to look that up you need to read that on it. You don't need to overkill it. You don't need to underkill it. You need to make sure you get the right amount of product. As far as types for your bugs, there's many different types of insecticides. You just kind of have to encounter that as you come in and identify the type of bugs you have. There are granular insecticides. There's liquid insecticides and there's dust insecticides. There's different applicators for putting that out. Uh, a good rotary duster for putting out dust to make it effective, it needs to be a fine mist. You can't get that by throwing it out. You waste most of the product by using a pair of pantyhose or a dusting salt. So it, it's well worth the investment, not only because it goes further with your dust with a rotary duster. Um, I personally don't use dust. I really like dust. I run irrigation a lot, so I, I, dust is a waste for me. But if I did do dust, I'd spend the 35 to $45 to put that out. Sprayers, when you're spraying liquid applications, there are tank sprayers like you see on either side here that you could use. There are also hose-in type sprayers that have meters on the top that you can dial that to how much you want to put out. Depending on the application, I tend to use tank sprayers for herbicide because I need to direct that into small areas. We'll have a separate thing on the, the quality of tank sprayers. We'll do a different video on that, but uh, Anyhow, the basic principle is I usually if I'm putting out insecticides or fungicides, I try to use a hose-in sprayer because I can get better coverage. I can pour my chemical in here and mix them. So it, it kind of depends on what you need. Uh, they make seven. They make copper fungicide. They make a high yield. Don't get caught up in the name brand. What you need to be focused on is down here on the bottom this part right here, the active ingredient. It's what's inside that matters in the percentages of that. 
there may be a reason why you can buy one brand cheaper than the other. It may not be the same strain. So when you do your research and you look for a chemical to buy, don't go up there with your wallet sealed up. You got time in these plants, buy a good product, buy something that'll work, have a little knowledge when you walk in. Be doing some looking on the type of bugs that you see on, on the internet. Most of you have cell phones and try to halfway identify that bug. Then look up what it takes to control that and then look up what's on the market and see what the different ones are and the recommended strength of that ingredient in it. And that way, when you walk in the store, you have a little understanding. I tend to want to shop at feed and garden type centers instead of box stores, nothing to do with money or keeping money local, but feed and garden centers, you generally have somebody in there who's been there a little while or he's in, him or her is into gardening. They'll have a little more knowledge. When you walk into a store and you need to look at insecticides and stuff like that, you, you want to talk to somebody at least has a knowledge of the insect size, maybe not the way they work, but when you walk in there and you've done looked it up and your product says you need permethrin or cypermethrin, you want to know when you walk in there that this guy's got some knowledge of what cypermethrin is. The rest is up to you. I mean, most of these, a lot of these people working, especially in big box stores, he don't know what that stuff is so as far as strength and different wise. He might know what the chemical is because he's put it on the shelves. If you're lucky and get somebody that wants to help you. It's up to you to know what strengths you're looking for and what, you're, and what you need and to read them directions on the back. Fungicides are the same way. You get into a lot of fungicides and there's multiple fungicides like this. You'll take this copper fungicide. It does certain things like this list on the front for roses, listed fruits, and listed vegetables. It tells you how to use it for each individual thing on the back and some precautionaries of do's and don'ts. You need to know that. What type of application tool to put it out with? Do you want to run it until it's dripping or really until it's not? Is there a temperature control? All of these factor into how this product works. So that that's what you need to be paying attention to or nothing you use is going to work. I've seen that all the time with a lot of people when I ran that feed and garden center, and when you would get some of them that would listen and go back home and try it like you told them and invest the money in the applicator, most of them come back and told you it worked. The honest ones, uh, you could tell them real quick because it was usually the same ones coming back wanting a refund that didn't. But anyhow, on top of the copper fungicide, they have many different ones. The product I use a lot of, I don't have any of right now, but it's a, a triple action type spray. It doesn't matter about name brand, it's what's in it. Most of them have a pyrethrin, which is an insecticide. And then they have a, a fungicide that's in them. A lot of them use neem oil, dormant oil, stuff like that. And then it has another chemical. I can't remember what it is. And it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. But it's a miticide. So in one spray, you're getting an insecticide, miticide, and fungicide. Now, you have to understand that when you're buying something like that, you're going to pay more money than you would for a straight insecticide, fungicide, or miticide because they're trying to hit a balance to hit a multiple of stuff where instead of buying something that does just each individual thing. So you're gonna pay a little more money because of that. But in the same respect, you got one product that'll do multiple things. If you try that and say you have some, some black leaf mold on one of your camellias or something like that, and it doesn't work, it, didn't, it doesn't mean that it was a junk product. It just means that it wasn't for that type of mold, or maybe it wasn't a strong enough concentration. Maybe you need to try to get a straight top fungicide. So all that matters in that. And then you have what we call granular insecticide. Now, as a general rule in the garden, there are a couple different ways you need to be looking at this in your garden. The first way is to determine whether you're using this on food products or ornamental products. If you're using a granular, same as with a liquid, on food products, you need to read on the back of that bag and you need to make sure that that bag is approved with the chemical that's in that bag. You read the chemicals just like you do, like I showed you on the liquid, your active ingredient and your percentages. You wanna make sure if you're using that on vegetable gardens, that it, that, that it lists vegetables on it, that it's okay. Some stuff does, but it's a certain amount of time after you put it out before you're allowed to eat the vegetables. So you need to know that when you're buying that. Are you using it on flowers and in your lawn and on ornamentals? If you're using it on that, then that's a whole different ball game. The biggest thing is to make sure that you buy enough product. That's where so many people with a granular fail. 
They walk in there and they're trying to get it cheap, money's tight, whatever the reason. They don't get enough product. They put it out and it fails. Let's take, for example, let me just show you a figure. We'll figure on this bag what it recommends to a thousand square feet. And we'll break that down into a one acre piece of property and see if it hits what you think. What do you think it'll take to do that with? How many bags of that do you think? That's an 11 and a half pound bag. How many bags of that? So let's get over here where we can see what we're talking about. Let's just say we're gonna treat for army worms. Now this tells us that in that, we need 50 pounds per acre. That means you would need just shy of five bags to do it for army worms. But now let's drop down right here. This was the most common thing people asked about using it for when I ran that feeding garden. Ants and fleas. It tells you here you need 200 pounds per acre. That means you need 20 bags of this minimum to do an acre for ants and fleas. So that's what I'm talking about when I say it's important to read the directions. And just like anything else on the back of that bag, it tells you for different type applicators, broadcasters, what you should be set, setting it on to get that distribution. So, so application is, is as important as getting the right chemical. If you go through the trouble of, of doing all the research and getting the right chemical and then you don't apply it right and use the right application tools and do it to the manufacturer's recommendation, you've shortchanged yourself. You did all the research for nothing. So that's important. Anyhow, that's about all I got right there. I appreciate y'all joining me.